So hello and welcome to You So You, my channel about all the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. And this week we are talking about French seams, both with and without zips in the seams. So grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. Okay, French seams are a great way to finish the interiors of your garments. They enclose the raw edges within the seam finish itself. And it's a, a slightly slower process as a result you do get a really nice finish. So we're using French seams throughout this uh, garment as far as possible. So I'm just going to do the side seam of the bodice here. Now you'll notice my right sides are outside. Ordinarily, we'll sew seams right side to right side so the seam ends up on the inside of the garment. But for the first step of French seams, we're going to be doing it the other way around. We're going to line up our seams wrong sides together and pin them in place. Now, say so it's a two-pass process, so the first time you sew the seam, you're going to sew it on the outside of the garment, but it will end up on the inside in the end. So the seam allowance on this pattern is 5 eighths of an inch, which is a pretty standard seam allowance. So I'm going to sew the first pass less than that, and I'm going to sew it at 3 eighths of an inch. Um, the reason for that will become clear in just a moment because I'm going to come back once I put that stitch line in. Okay, so my stitch line is in and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim down the seam allowance. So I'm going to trim, trim it down to between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. Just under a quarter of an inch. Um, not over a quarter of an inch. Be really careful with that because in a minute we're going to do something that's going to rely on your seam being trimmed down thin enough so I'm aiming for an eighth of an inch but if it's slightly more that's okay as long as it's under a quarter of an inch and you're not so you're not going to want to cut right up next to the stitch line but obviously an eighth of an inch is pretty close so we trim that off And we've got a nice narrow seam allowance left on the outside. So I'm going to press this first flat. So I'm going to press it to, you could, could press it open, but I find that a bit fiddly with them being such thin seam allowances. So I'm going to press it towards the back of this bodice. And it is important to press it at this point, it helps with the next stage. If you are able to press it open, which you might be able to do if you're nearer to a quarter of an inch of a seam, or you've got a really good pointy iron, um, just don't burn your fingers. Um, that'll help even more, but at least pushing it to, pressing it to one side does help. So we now turn the uh, garment right sides to right sides like we normally would. And we're going to make sure that seam stitch line is right on the edge. I'm going to press it again. And I'm going to pin it back together. So when I come and do this second pass of stitching, we've already used three eighths of an inch, about five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So that means I need to sew it at two eighths of an inch or quarter of an inch, which just happens to be the width of a standard presser foot. Uh, or it is on mine anyway. So I can line up the edge of the, the seams where the first row of stitches are with the edge of my presser foot and know that I'm going to get the right width to enclose that raw edge in the seam. So I'll come back in a minute and show you what it's like once I've stitched that in. Okay, so now our seam is fully sewn. Got our two eighths of an inch, quarter of an inch seam there, so it's nice and narrow. Again, I'm gonna press it to the back of the garment. So that's the way I like my side seams pressed. So I'm gonna press it once from the inside and to make sure everything is sitting properly on the outside and hasn't sort of folded up strange, 
I turn it over, make sure that my fabric is nicely pulled apart at the stitch line and press it again. So I'm pressing from the front to the back to just push that back fabric against the stitches and make sure they're sitting nicely. So there we have our side seam all stitched up so nice and neat on the outside and on the inside all the raw edges are enclosed in this little flap here. So that's French seams. Okay, so you may be thinking you can't do a French seam if you've got a zip in the seam or, um, or a pocket or something. You absolutely can. It just takes a little bit of uh, fiddling. So I've put in a zip to this seam. Let's see, it's uh, still sticking at the end there. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just uh, go to the inside, move that zip out of the way. and hold my seam allowance together as close to that as I can. And I'm going to notch it within the seam allowance, so not going any further in than just inside the 5 eighths of an inch. That's then going to allow that bit of seam allowance to work independently from the other bit. Now we need to go right side out again. Because as we know, French seams are worked wrong sides together first. So I'm gonna move my zip out of the way. I'm just gonna pin it up out of the way just so that I don't have to worry about it. As is quite often the case, I couldn't get a zip that was the exact right length for this project, so it's a little bit on the long side, but uh, I haven't quite decided if I'm going to shorten it or not. So, right, so we're going to match up our seam as we normally would and pin it together, same as we would for any other French seam. So the process is from at this point exactly the same. So pin it, stitch it at three um, eighths of an inch, trim it, turn it the other pre or trim press it, turn it the other way out, and sew it at two eighths of an inch, and press it again. So there we have our zip with a beautiful French seam sitting underneath it. So I hope you found that useful and interesting and if you did you may also enjoy this video here.